end, but we do have we do have a community, and we're going to be posting all of the uh, event videos and trans. I know not transcripts, but you're going to have the slides, aren't you? In the in the uh, in the back. Yep. So we'll have the slides also there in the community. We're going to be sending out a community link to you after invite link after the event. So you do want to make sure again that you mute your mute your mic and uh, just turn off your phone, uh, pay close attention. Like I said, we, we went through a dry run yesterday. This presentation is excellent. Troy did a great job with it. You guys are gonna learn a lot. And I talk to Troy all the time and I'm always learning new stuff from this guy, but uh, he's gonna be sharing some new stuff and some really important stuff for you to um, be far more efficient with LinkedIn and you're gonna, you're gonna be happy with what you see. Um, yeah, one thing I want to uh, mention is that um, the community will shoot an email out afterwards um, to everyone. And uh, where, where's the email coming from, Ed? Uh, that's going to be coming from the community, I believe. We have to check with Chicky. Mm -hmm. uh, for Is it under reason. my name, like a return? It'll, or something it like should that? be under your name. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to send it myself under the moderator and couldn't do it. So it mm -hmm. has to come from you. Okay. So when you get an opportunity, you'll get that out to everybody and we'll, uh, we'll shoot an email out tomorrow. Also, it's just a reminder to check your email for the community. If you don't receive the email, just reply back to us, let us know and we'll get you a direct invite. Yeah, the reason for the community is that we didn't want to, uh, uh, we wanted to kind of centralize a place where everyone can talk to each other. And so since we have about almost 1500 people that have registered, um, we expect Over 15. Yeah, over 15. Okay. Yeah. We expect um, probably a third or a 20, at least 20% of people show up. And, um, you know, the community will allow people to kind of communicate with each other and exchange information. Um, Ed, if you can, uh, I think we can probably start pretty soon. If you want to go ahead and add, talk about the sponsors and go ahead and add that content to the chat. All right, I certainly will. We have several sponsors and we want to thank our sponsors too for helping us to uh, make this first, the initial uh, inaugural uh, event for the, the LinkedIn growth strategy, uh, a success. And I want to first, I want to thank Shay Davis who is really, really good at social media. And she got the word out and, and had a lot of people invited a lot of interaction. If you're looking for a social media expert uh, to help you run your, your social media, Cache Davis is the person to talk to. I'm gonna be adding all these links after I mention each person. Uh, we talked about the community and Chicky Fitzgerald is the person that's putting that together. She is the community expert. Uh, she, I think she reached out to you a little while ago about putting the community together and she's done a fantastic job. She's one of the moderators. You go back in there and uh, once you join the community, it's not, don't think of it as something that's promotional just for Troy or the, uh, the, the co-authors uh, for, this, for this book for the LinkedIn Red, LinkedIn Red Book. It really is a community for everyone. We want, uh, we want like-minded people in there that are looking to succeed with LinkedIn uh, to participate. And when you go in there, you'll also see almost right away, uh, a couple of the members uh, that have already joined the, the community that we've got video testimonials for what they do. And so we're also promoting other people's work that have nothing to do with the Red Book. So, Chicky is great at that, and I'll put her link in uh, at developing communities. Communities are so important. We can get into that at a different time, but it's something that you should definitely look into. And uh, Lydia uh, Sugarman is uh, another sponsor, and she runs a CRM, which we're going to be switching our most active uh, subscribers to. And it's, it's a very robust CRM. And so you'll learn more about that. She is one of the participants, um, co-authors of the book. And she's going to, at some point, I think she's going to have a segment. So you'll learn about how to maximize your results using a robust CRM. I'm Ed Forteau, uh, AKA Mr. Deliverability. I'm the email expert and running the email list for Troy. We're going to be having a session uh, next month on combining email with LinkedIn. And 
Uh, I hope you can attend. It's a, it'll be a very, very informative session. If you're not using email with LinkedIn, I can tell you, you are losing out on a good percentage of your opportunities. 70% of the people who have signed up for this event have signed up directly through emails that we have sent out. Yeah, I think the LinkedIn event is more of a facilitator at first, and there's no direct correlation with that in the Zoom registration. Um, so what we do is um, we kind of send reminders and information that's kind of helpful to people um, prior to the event to let them know if it's there. Because a lot of people don't even check um, their LinkedIn messages, or if it's not on their calendar, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. I'm like that myself. If it's not on the calendar, we don't have a meeting. <laughs> this is how I operate, you know, and that's how I block off time and, and things like that. Um, yeah, so if anyone wants to connect with any of these people, including me, I think Ed just put um, the, the LinkedIn there, the LinkedIn link, um, as well as I think um, I have a booking link as well. If you can add my booking link in there, uh, sure. feel free to reach out to me if you want to kind of a 15 minute conversation. Um, one thing I have to ask everyone, you know, uh, if they join the community, uh, please don't sell, you know, we're not here to sell people, you can kind of present what you're doing. Um, but we don't want to make this kind of a salesy type deal, we want to uh, engage people. And the reason we're having the community because it's kind of a, a micro, uh, a very small specific uh, uh, thing versus a huge LinkedIn thing, because there's a lot of noise on LinkedIn sometimes, and we just want to kind of separate that out, um, you know, so we can kind of get some value out of it. Um, so it's seven after right now. Um, I appreciate your help, Ed, uh, with the links and providing all that information to me. But if you connect with any of us, um, I would kind of mention that you were on the show, uh, this show, this webinar, um, you know, the LinkedIn Growth Strategy webinar. Um, that way we kind of know who you are because a lot of times we don't accept, I'm sure we don't accept everyone's invite just like everyone else. And that way we can kind of uh, accept the invite and kind of go from there. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and start with the first screen here, if that's okay, Ed. All right. I'm just looking for your uh, appointment calendar link. Yeah. Oh, I can just... Uh, can if I just you had it handy, I... just plug it in because I'm having... Yeah, I can probably just on. grab the whole thing here. Um, oh, um, this kind of formatted weird, but, um, can you see it? And I didn't add my name. <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I, I probably didn't format it properly. It just comes out weird from the copy and paste. Hang on. All righty. All right, well, I'll go ahead and get started then. There you go. All right, so there's two major areas that we're going to be talking through um, for the next maybe 40 minutes. And we're going to have a little pauses in between, but... The bottom line is, you know, what do I need to make LinkedIn, LinkedIn work for me? Um, I'll tell you a little background. Um, I have an IT company called ISO Interactive. Uh, we did Coca-Cola Enterprise site, some Harry Potter virtual world stuff, a lot of gamification, Xbox mobile stuff, you know, Coca-Cola, um, a lot of interesting apps and projects and things like that. And I was doing really well until I wasn't. And um, these larger fortune companies, they in Atlanta anyway, and this Atlanta is much different than maybe a New York or LA, but in Atlanta, um, you know, they just stopped using the agencies. And this happened probably about 10 years ago um, when they just, uh, all the agencies kind of dried up. Um, and so all my work came through the agencies because they couldn't do the work that we, we did and all of a sudden they became more of a, a competition. And I don't really go direct to the fortune companies and things like that. I'm not really you know, an expert in that area. And I had a buddy uh, had a similar business. He did really, really well. And I said, you know, what's going on? My, my portfolio is much better than yours. I'm kind of razzing him a little bit. Um, but he said he, he got it from LinkedIn and I couldn't figure out why, how he could get um, this amount of business through LinkedIn. 
And I realized I was what you call a terrible dater. Yeah, you heard me, dater. Um, I don't date very well because uh, I'm a programmer by nature and I'm very technically oriented. So a lot of times I know the answer before the question. And I realized most people don't think that way, you know? Um, so when I go out for a date, you know, I have to really think about uh, what I'm doing, you know, if I'm dating for business. So if you're dating for real life and I find someone very beautiful and I say, I find you very attractive. I want to have two babies with you, you know, and let's get married today. They're going to look at you like you're crazy, you know? So that method doesn't work. And I think a lot of people are using that same, you know, blunt, direct method, um, you know, before finding out about those, that individual to see what they like, what's in it for them, you know, and them just to get to know you as a person. Um, so LinkedIn is the same way. So we created kind of a, a system, an algorithm um, to kind of date on LinkedIn, if you will. You know, it's not literally dating, but it's to get to know uh, your potential prospects and partners and stuff like that. So we created a book or we're creating a book and we're touching on a couple chapters every month. And these all have to do with LinkedIn and business growth. Now, today we're talking about two areas here. One is creating a repeatable daily process. And the other one is maximizing uh, events as a participant. The latter is, a, is really, really straightforward. Um, um, you, would, you wouldn't know it until you know it, um, but it makes a big impact. Um, talking about maximizing events, you know, um, about um, one third of your business and I've seen up to 70% of other people's business um, being produced by events, you know. Uh, so um, events, um, participating with them, you know, running the events, they're all very important for a business thing. So um, a portion of my business comes from my posts, you know, a portion comes from my direct, uh, my DM, my direct outreach and my rollover for video mail. And a portion comes from, uh, comes from uh, these events. So they're, they're, I don't ever have all my eggs in one basket, but I use several different things to kind of make these things happen. Now let's start with uh, creating a repeatable process. Well, one, one thing that you don't want to do is play around on LinkedIn for eight or 12 or 15 hours a day. And that's easy, very easy to do. Um, there's so many features, so many functions. You have to figure out what works for you um, and then how to get that time down. You know, so you need to reduce the time, um, get a repeatable process so you can get that process done faster and more efficient. Um, then you need to figure out how to communicate better to your target audience, um, your, um, you know, your prospects, as well as your current clients and things like that. And then how to, how to build more high value relationships. You want to always network up and not always network down because when you, when you network up, um, price is not as big as a deal. You know, um, what's very expensive to maybe a very, very small business may make total sense to a medium sized business. So you have to kind of approach it depending on your services and stuff like that. Um, as far as maximizing events and stuff, we already talked about our rules of engagement. You know, we don't want to pitch, um, but we want to kind of show you how to seek opportunities for some of these events and then others how to convert um, some of these conversations to vetted meetings. So I'll go ahead and on the, on the next slide, unless you have a question or a comment, Ed, because I'm not reading the chat. I'm not seeing anything. And I completely understand what you mean when <laughs> you talk about it can take over your life. Uh, that's what's been driving me crazy. And I, when, when we talked about doing this, this first um, event, uh, I think a lot of people find that they spend way too much time on social media and they don't have enough time for the actual business of talking to qualified prospects and providing the services that they offer. Yeah. And then there are also, um, I think this webinar has a Q and a option and there's a couple of questions going into there as well. I think, uh, when we upgraded, it gave us a lot more, um, features. So if you take a look at that, Ed, you know, whenever, and you can kind of chime. Unfortunately, it's not giving me access. To oh, my those. goodness. I guess the I only one, but you're attending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Then I'm going to have to read it. Um, let's see here. Uh, L uh, Lydia Sugarman, uh, one of the sponsors, um, they have a promo code for attendees. I may post it in the chat. Uh, Lydia, yes, sure. 
Um, again, Lydia is the CRM expert. She's an enterprise level CRM. If uh, you want to check it out, um, connect with her on LinkedIn. And I think that we'll go ahead and give those links again at the end. Uh, Lydia, feel free to go ahead and add the promo code now. And then that way, Ed, you can grab it and then you can repaste it when you repeat the information. Um, and then once you repeat the information, I also put my booking link in it. Um, Hassan, um, does it all, all of it implement the job seekers also? Um, no, we're not going to really talk about job seekers uh, so much. We're talking about uh, B2B, um, driving business. Uh, where do you get the red book? Well, the red book is not completed yet. We're finishing a few chapters every, every single month. Um, we will, uh, we actually have a sponsor for that and they're actually raising money for it. So the first version of it is going to be a very large PDF. It's going to be uh, 300 pages or uh, somewhere around that. And it's a technical manual, uh, how to communicate, you know, thought process, uh, how to check things, um, how to move stuff off LinkedIn and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and move back to creating this repeatable process here. So I'm not burning too much time. There's going to be uh, six sections. Um, I think the first two sections are going to be combined. Uh, we want to talk about possibilities. So I'm going to open up your mind and saying there's a lot of stuff you can do on LinkedIn, um, but um, you have to kind of pick. And when you're picking from these things, you have to figure out Am I in entrepreneur mode or I'm CEO mode? Entrepreneurs are very talented, um, but the mode allows, uh, it prevents you from getting past your ceiling because of time. Uh, one person can't do everything. That's when the CEO mode come, kicks in and you're able to kind of delegate some of these responsibilities so you can actually run a company as a company. So those possibilities would change depending if like you're using a service like us you know, to kind of outsource some of these, some of these features uh, and organize it for you, or you um, build, you know, you build things like S uh, SOP, service operating procedures and training for stuff like that. Um, so possibilities, uh, starting handwritten activities, um, pretty interesting. I won't get into it until we hit the slide. Uh, communicate on posts based on feed or prospects. So, um, your feed is when you log into Facebook and you have your, your post feed. Um, and we talk about prospects as well, because if you use Sales Navigator, and just to clarify, Sales Navigator is a purchased um, LinkedIn um, you know, uh, service, uh, allows, it's a whole nother site, allows you to go there to help you target. Um, and it has a lot of different features on it. Uh, we use it for targeting, we use it for pre-CRM. We use it to you know, follow people and stuff like that. So on Sales Navigator, once you create a list of people, um, you can follow just their post. That's what I mean by communicate based on the prospects. You can do a micro feed. Uh, the other item is targeting individuals to communicate with. So um, you know, who do I want to communicate with, who I don't want to communicate with. Now, creating content, uh, other tasks that create engagement. Um, there's a lot of other things that aren't is specific to LinkedIn, um, but they're very helpful. They'll actually help you close deals. A lot of them is uh, talking about documents, you know, and it's a very boring subject, but hey, if you are about increasing your bottom line, then, you know, you definitely want to kind of listen to that because uh, even on creating a better recap or a follow-up um, conversation before your secondary meeting can make the difference between closing a deal and not. Um, Ed, feel free to uh, stop me um, you know, uh, as I'm talking, because I tend to blab. So if you see anything of interest, and you're on mute right now, by the way, Ed. Um, um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and go into the sections now, if that's okay. No, it's all good, man. Awesome. Now, this is a, a graphic I put together um, a while back, and it shows a little bit of information about what we call possibilities. Now, it looks kind of complicated and all that other stuff, but it talks about a system. A system is not um, a fully automated type thing. It takes humans to do it. LinkedIn does not like automation. So you kind of have to kind of tether back on the automation and put more thought into it. Um, LinkedIn really likes kind of that one-on-one -on -one engagement, and that's kind of some of their core values. They want people to actually engage, uh, to, to build authentic relationships. 
and uh, by no means is LinkedIn perfect. So a lot of stuff that you do may not get recognized right away, but you have to put effort in that personal branding and that personal outreach. So I'll give you an example of a, a particular system. Say you want to connect with someone and you have a limitation of say a hundred invites. I think mine is like 350 or something. I don't know what it is, but um, say you have a limitation. A lot of people have this 20 a day limitation Monday to Friday and they're out of invites. And so you need to make sure that each invite counts. Well, what would, would it make better sense to actually uh, create a list, targeted list on um, Sales Navigator? So if you did a search on Sales Navigator, you can pull those people into a list and then you can target that individual list um, and you can take a look at their individual feed, their post. Uh, if you engage with their post with thoughtful, you know, real information, you're engaging and you can communicate well. Um, the, if you connect with them the following week, the chances go from 10 or 15 or 20 percent all the way up to 60, 80 or 90 percent of them accepting. And, and once they accept, they've already been primed for that conversation. That's not even on here. So uh, imagine doing that, um, you know, before you're, you're actually connecting, which, which would increase your rate. Um, here, this talks about posts, videos, um, images. Um, this is, uh, how many people are familiar with Gary V? Put a one in the chat if people have heard of Gary V. Oh, I well, see. While people are putting the ones in the chat, uh, <laughs> what you just mentioned is what I do all the time while well, I just started. Someone said two, I couldn't do the chat, when, I gotta scroll the chat up. Um, so uh, he has a, a very give, give, give model, right? And um, and one thing, uh, oh, someone put 11, so that person didn't see it, no. Um, so he has one model where if you create one piece of content long form, like, you know, kind of what we're doing here, um, um, you could chop that up into, into 30 pieces of content, right? Which is kind of hard to do, but the concept is pretty solid. Um, what you can do on maybe a webinar or a meeting or anything like that on a Zoom meeting, you can take that video and you can chop it up. If I interview someone and they say it's 30 minutes long, I can create, um, you know, uh, four, eight, 12 pieces of content from that, you know, and then we can use something like Vidnami to, to convert that video over. And we'll talk about that later. So anyway, post videos, images, once you create this material, it could be reused across uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever you're doing. I primarily use it on LinkedIn. Ed, you can see my mouse move, correct? I can. Okay, awesome. Uh, this represents uh, these direct message campaigns. Um, this one is a, a, newer, uh, a newer connection. Um, and we just talked about how to kind of boost the rate to kind of connect with people. And then you can have a sequence. Now, people assume that this is automated. It's not. Uh, we actually create an FAQ to um, um, able to respond well. And then we do have a sequence, but the sequence is really made to kind of a, as a base. Before that message is sent, you know, we see previous messages. We see the, um, the profile. We may look at a post before we respond. That way, every single message is unique and LinkedIn really likes that. They like proper engagement. Um, this right here is an existing network. So you have your new connections that you're establishing. You also have your existing network. If you have 10,000, 20,000, 3,000, 1,000 uh, people, you're actually leaving money on the table if you don't, don't say hello to them once in a while. And so you can do things like quarterlies um, and, uh, or you can even do a sequence uh, for that as well. Uh, BN is beyond your normal network. That's like third level plus, right? Um, if you have Sales Navigator, you have X amount of messages uh, you can send a month. I think it's 800 that you can send um, a month and, a, and about 50 to 60% of the people um, are on this open network that you can connect with. And that's a, a big deal with open mail and in mail. Um, so what happens if you send a message, um, you know, they don't respond? Well, you should be able to pull that data out since you're connected with them or communicate with them and send them an email. Not everyone is a LinkedIn message person. Uh, most people are actually email. 
So you want to go ahead and try one first and then perhaps go to another after a certain period of time. Um, this goes along with video mail as well, and, and we'll get in, into that a little bit later. Uh, this is talking about reports and consulting. So you get an idea of this is a possibility of one system you can do. Um, you can literally have seven, eight, nine, ten different campaigns happen from one LinkedIn account. People don't really know how to maximize that, you know, and by doing that, I get about 30 replies a day. And so I get about 15 to 25 bookings every single week, you know, and not every client's like that. Some clients get four bookings a week, you know, uh, uh, things along that, those lines. So I'll go ahead and click on the next slide if I get a little stuck here. Now, the second part is handwritten activities. Now, this sounds a bit odd, um, but if you physically write stuff down, of course, we have our calendars. Our calendars are for our meetings, but they're not really designed for like work activity. By transferring that on a daily basis and the act of writing those down, you can fill in your gaps for your work. And when you write pen to paper, you provide, you, it provides up to like 90% more retention. And so I don't really know if that's true. Uh, I, I would say between 50 and 90% is my guess because they have all these different studies that um, do different things. But the key here is to understand that if you are already mentally prepared and you already know what's happening, you could definitely fill in the gaps. Um, half your day is wasted. Most people's at least half their day is wasted because they're not on it. When you're doing a complicated task, it usually takes you a while. So you don't get that momentum. So that stop and go is really what kills you on your time, you know, your time effectiveness. And if you're able to mentally prepare, you kind of have a jump start. So you increase your productivity. So you're filling your gaps, you're increasing your productivity. It literally takes 20 minutes a day. Um, um, Ed, do you want to go ahead and add that link to that company? I'm not sponsoring them. It's just something I use. But you could see that you can break down what's happening on 15 minute increments, uh, notes about that, uh, what's happening, uh, your mindset for the day, uh, all those different things that you're grateful for um, that will help you kind of propel you to, you know, kind of the next level. So when I start using this, uh, when I start using this, I ended up um, increasing my productivity by three times, literally. Um, and so you don't, you want to fill in the gaps, you want to be optimized, and you want to know for the next day. So you tend to write this either the day before or probably the night um, before, because right after your day, you have 20 minutes and you, and you write, you hand write these things down. A lot of people don't believe in this, but um, it will really change uh, how you do things. Um, the other thing is replying based on your SOP. Uh, SOP is a service operating procedure. The flavor of SOP we're talking about right here is FAQ. It's figuring the last question. That's the type of SOP we're doing. So we develop for our clients an FAQ. It has their booking links in it. It has their contact information. It has some of their best posts or, or other type of links that are pertinent for conversations. And it has the top, you know, between seven and 10 uh, frequently asked questions a customer would ask. And this is an example of it. And you can kind of see the, um, you know, see the spread here um, as far as the different types of information. Um, we even have like what happens if they reply too early or whatever. And, and we have certain scenarios that work out well. So that's actually, um, you know, um, talking about um, creating this document on, on how to reply. The good thing about these SOPs, it will help both an entrepreneur by himself versus the CEO mindset, well, and the CEO mindset, because this document is a training document uh, that can be used for your virtual assistant or your assistant to kind of reply for you. So a lot of people have uh, their assistant reply for them because they don't have time to engage and then train that assistant to only send them messages that really, really um, they have to answer because they're a personal nature or they have um, uh, a technical nature that that person cannot answer. Um, how do I improve and export opportunities in LinkedIn? Um, that's a, I don't understand the question. <laughs> Sorry. How do I improve and export opportunities? Uh, you mean pull people off of LinkedIn? 
Um, yeah, so there's other tools and we'll get to that in a little bit. But one thing is um, once you connect with someone, depending on the message and the flow, for example, if you connected with someone and you gave them maybe a welcome video, right? And you did a 20 second welcome video saying, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot you a message uh, on, on uh, via email because not many people use this LinkedIn. You're letting them know that happens prior and then you pull their information off. Uh, if you're connected with them, you will have access to an email and there's soft third party software that can vet that email or give you the best email for it. That way, when you connect with someone, you kind of have permission to kind of reach out to them if you want to move them off off of LinkedIn. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, tracking incoming responses. This is something that an entrepreneur will have a hard time doing. The CEO mindset will be able to do based on the SOP created. Now, um, why do we want to track correspondence, you know, coming in? Well, number one, you need to know how your campaign is going. You know, how many people are interested? How many people are not interested? What type of conversations are coming up? Those are indicators on how to change your, uh, change your content or change your approach, change your targeting and that sort of thing. It also allows you to subtract. If you're gathering emails um, based on your conversations, you also need to know who to remove they're not interested or you've already had conversations with them, you do not want to send them an email or video mail. You know, you kind of want to avoid those things because you don't, you don't want to spam. So those little details um, make a big difference. One customer that's upset is takes you 20 good customers to kind of replace in this digital world. And that one to 20 options is, is not a good option. Uh, notifications. Now, notifications is about 50% of your engagement. People say, yeah, I send DMs out and then I'll send them an email or whatever from, you know, uh, that, that kind of branched off from, from that. And I have these three campaigns, first level, second level, third level type of campaigns going on LinkedIn. Um, you know, um, your notifications a lot of times are even more active. And so on LinkedIn, there's a tab on, that just says notifications. That's your incoming messages from your feed. You know, so if... If people are mentioning you or, or someone's birthday or anniversary is happening, um, if someone's re replying to one of the posts that you've done, that's the incoming information. And so you want to check that daily as well. And that takes about, you know, 20 minutes. Now you say 20, 30, 40 minutes, a lot. That's a lot of, lot of minutes, right? Well, you're not going to be doing all this stuff. You have to pick and choose what's important to you. And if you have something like I put the external here, this is someone else doing it for you, you know? Um, this is someone else doing it for you, or you can do it yourself. And if you're not really recording and you're just checking messages, the easiest way to do that as a single person is to go to your messages and select, you know, um, unread and go straight down that list. Um, unfortunately, you're only going at half capacity because you're missing out on, um, you know, follow up, understanding about follow ups, understanding about pulling stuff off of LinkedIn when appropriate. Um, so that's about, you know, replying on uh, SOPs. If anyone had any questions on SOPs, um, you know, go ahead on the chat, feel free. Um, I'll go ahead and see. Ah, Troy, how do I effectively use SmartLink in Sales Navigator? Wow. Well, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, but what a SmartLink is, it's kind of a, um, a place where you can create a page or a post or information so you don't have to upload yourself. I don't use smart links um, because a lot of times they'll age out. What I mean by aging out, I've seen on profiles that someone had a smart link and then on their LinkedIn profile where they're actually showing some of the interesting posts or links, um, the image won't come through. So I personally don't use smart links on Sales Navigator uh, and I'm not an expert on that one, one item. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, Dev Smitta. Sorry, I'm awful at names. Um, the next thing we're talking about is communicating posts based on feed and prospects. We mentioned this before, um, but there's really two feeds if you have Sales Navigator. So when you're using Sales Navigator, what you're doing is you're creating these um, lists. And here's an example of list here. We have influencers, we have competition, we have um, good to know, you know, um, sometimes you want to keep an eye on the competition. They're doing some good stuff. 
And you want to say, oh, how can I up my game? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, influencers, uh, you also always want to uh, aim for the stars and engage with those people that you admire, that have a great network, have great conversations. Um, you may have, I even have lists for good to know, you know, that sort of thing. And then I have my prospects and then maybe future prospects. Future pro prospects is a list uh, of people say, hey, can you check with me next month? you know, and I'll go down the list and stuff like that. And I also use this as a pre CRM. So on LinkedIn, you can click a button, add to sales navigator, boom, you're done, right? You don't have to worry about plugins or anything like that. You can, you can organize it. And then when you have time, you can kind of bring those over to a CRM if appropriate. So um, the posts are on the main home feed of uh, LinkedIn. This is a post and it's kind of the, you know, it's kind of designed around, but you can get an idea of it's a post. So it's just, the post on LinkedIn and the post on Sales Navigator, they're identical. The difference is um, the post on Sales Navigator are specific to those lists. And that is allows you to kind of tune in. Who do I want to talk to? Because I have uh, like 20,000 connections or so. I don't know. I have a lot of connections and the feed is full of stuff, you know? So I, of course I want to engage and actually have thoughtful information. Um, but I also want to specify where I want to target. Another thing too is like, why am I, some, someone may ask, why am I writing conversation in these posts, right? Well, um, you have to have a giving attitude, you know, a caring personality um, because you have to engage with these people. If you have posts that are that seem that uh, entice you and you want to engage, you should do that. Because if you post stuff out and thinking people will always reply, no, a lot of those people reply are the ones that you post to them. So posting out and then sending a post, you know, I'm posting out. Um, writing comments or helpful com comments on a post in your feeds, sales navigator home feed, uh, um, increases your activity on your own posts that you send. I'm sorry, Ed, does that make sense? <laughs> I think so. I, yeah. Well, it's it's just a matter of, I, th I think people should really uh, look at connections and the people they want to reach out to and think in terms of what's most important to them. Like if you, it, what's most important to yourself, you take time to write a post and then you get very little activity on it. Someone comes along and writes a meaningful comment. It's you, you remember that, especially if like the average person maybe gets two, three comments. You're one of the, the two or three, and they're replying to that comment. You're on their radar now. So when when they see your post, they're most likely going to reciprocate and comment on yours. And the algorithm really helps. If they see activity, they will actually expand your own post. You know. Um, and don't expect to go viral every time. Sometimes it takes months um, to kind of move those numbers up with content that people seem uh, feel valuable. And you, you definitely want to post uh, three times a week at least, you know. Um, so I'll move on to the next screen here. And this is creating content. And we're just talking about posts. Um, uh, if you can uh, grab those, um, Ed, do you have those two links ready? I do. Getting ready to post. Yeah. Them so right these two links are actually LinkedIn articles, and the reason I created these articles is because we, it's what we call evergreen. Evergreen is something that's stationary. So I did a series of stuff about posting. You know, who to, um, what to post, ideas, you know, formats. Um, you know, what works well, what hurts you in the post, you know, the who, what, when, and why. And I think I had a question, an email came in, they asked me, you know, the best times to post and all that sort of thing. Well, typically it's between nine and 12. It keeps on changing a little bit, but between 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. of your, uh, that, um, of your target market. So if you're in Georgia and your target market is California, you know, then you, then you shift it um, three hours beforehand and that sort of thing. Um, so you'll get an idea of that. But these articles are a series of posts that I put together in the article. And the other one is documents. Um, I think I mentioned before how important documents are for organization, for creating a document that will allow people to see all your recommendations and case studies. Uh, documents allow you to do a, um, a recap of the conversation and I've actually closed deals from a recap. Uh, what I do for a document for a recap is 
I outlined five to 10 points of what we talked about very clearly. Um, and I have as a nice, neat design document. Underneath it is a little bit about what we do and a thank you page. And on top is a picture of the video. I actually take a video of the document and I go through it and I walk them through it in 30 seconds. By doing that, it's very personalized. It's very packaged. Um, uh, and it allows you to stand out, you know? And if there's 20 people trying to get someone's attention and you're the person that crossed their T's and dot the I's, they're gonna gravitate towards you, you know? So the three areas are con um, creating content, posting content, and then other activities. And we kind of went through that, but I'll touch it, I'll touch it on again. Um, for example, video editing software, very easy to do. Um, a lot of times um, we forget we have one of these. These are the, the best cameras that you can actually have uh, and then have the right equipment and, and things like that. I have a, a mic here and I have some lighting. I'm not gonna turn the camera around and all that stuff, but this is by far the best camera compared to what I have on screen. And so creating a video can be a little tedious at first because it's very odd, but get a tripod, you know, um, create some of these videos and use some of these online tools. Uh, Vietnamese is being purchased by GoDaddy, but that's what we use right now. Um, but in the posting links, you can find uh, different softwares that do different things and different techniques. But the important thing about some of the video stuff is that 70%, I think it's higher now, but 70% of the people watch video without sound, which I think is kind of crazy. But if, if they're saying it's 70%, then that means you have to have the, the sub captions underneath. So you need to transfer your voice to actually text. And uh, you have to have titles and things like that because when people are scrolling down, they wanna see if they wanna watch the video or not. Uh, videos tend to you know, want to create from 30 seconds to a minute and a half for LinkedIn. Anything above a minute and a half, unless it's a rare thing you know, or a technical aspect or whatever, they tend, the numbers are, tend to be a lot lower. Um, and we talked about inexpensive software, scheduling. Tons of scheduling. There's one called Plumber. Uh, Ed, can you add that one? It's a really a good piece of software for scheduling your posts. Um, it allows you to kind of post extra comments after, like if you have a link a minute or two after. Um, post video images and um, I don't think it does PDFs. So certain things you can't post on LinkedIn like PDFs. Uh, PDFs are considered carousels. Uh, nicely designed PDFs where they have large words, a single thought, over five, three to five different frames. Those actually are our highest. Polls are really high as well, that those are individually done, uh, then video, then images. And sometimes text will beat out all of them depending on the crowd, you know, text only post. Uh, posting content, we talked about three times a week. Uh, we talked about 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. every target market for the best times to do it. Uh, some people post twice a day. Um, if you're doing that, God bless you, you know. Uh, but if you do that, make sure that you're doing it early morning in the evening. Uh, the people who do that usually have a large audience already, um, much larger than even what I have. Um, we already talked about polls, video, text, images, and carousels. Um, other tasks. Well, oh, and I should mention the plumber link. Couldn't mm -hmm. find that. We, we talked about that yesterday, and all I got was. Uh, links for plumbers to do social media. So you and I will have to figure out. Oh, let me see if I can find URL. it real quick. It might be my cash. P L U M. -P. Oh, man. I like that tool anyway. There's a lot of other tools, but. Um, yeah, maybe it's spelled funny. I think so. I couldn't find it. Yeah, we'll just, I would just uh, look. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll put it in the community. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. So, um, other tasks. These are things that are so separated from LinkedIn. So, after you, their communication portion, of LinkedIn, they're not using LinkedIn tools. Um, one thing that you might wanna think about is running introductions properly. Now you say, why would I run an introduction to someone else, you know? Well, once you give, you receive. So you might have a partner that you pick once a week 
or once every two weeks and, and you want to introduce them to five people that you personally know on your network. You know, I have 20,000 people on my LinkedIn network. I don't know all of them, you know, to be honest with you. So I'm not going to point, you know, I'm not going to um, do a direct introduction unless I engage with them, have a meeting with them prior. And so what I've done was I picked a company that, that would run me, run proper introductions for certain purposes, right? And, and, and I would do the same for, for this partner for that week. Um, so there's three areas. Um, I would actually text the person uh, prior saying, I want to run an introduction. I would have some content that the other person would agree on before I sent it. I would send it to uh, a LinkedIn group message. So all of us see that. And then, uh, then I also send an email. By doing those three things, you increase them engaging um, from something like 20% to 80%. Four out of the five people replied to the last person. And the only reason the fifth person didn't do it, she told me she simply didn't have time. She's running a TV show, so she can't do that. The other thing is endorsing others. Real easy to do, um, very low maintenance. Um, not much more to talk about. That You can do that through LinkedIn. And documents and organizations uh, to help close deals. Um, the, those are documents like, can you give me examples of your clients and work and stuff like that? And you have a nice little document of all your case studies and videos on there. You click it and, you know, links out to the video. Um, I actually go on my LinkedIn profile and I have 35 or 40 people who have ran written recommendations. I grab the first 15 copy and paste uh, screen print in, in the document. And so the document's full. Uh, the other thing that's even more important is your is your follow up document that we talked about previously, and I probably mentioned a few times incorporating video in that. All right, so that the questions is, that we have here. Troy. We have questions. We do, we do. We have All them right. in the chat. So one of the on questions the is, uh, how often do you recommend posting? And as far as the, the LinkedIn algorithm is concerned, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, Someone has told me it's it's uh, publer.io. Thank you. Oh. It's uh, yeah, publer, P U B L E R.io. I was typing, I was fighting typing plumber.io. Yeah, that's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you for putting it in the open chat there. Um, oh, no, it's a private thing. So I'll just add it. Thank you, Selena. You're awesome. And uh, that's the link there. Can it, did it go? Oh, there you go. There you go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ed. So how many, how many times should we post per week to maximize the LinkedIn, LinkedIn algorithm? Uh, three to six. And then the next question was, okay, you said uh, they didn't know about posting between 9 p.m. and 12 p.m. No, 9 a.m., AM. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, what that about three, tagging... three or four hour window? Oh, that's Does it? tagging someone uh, incur a LinkedIn penalty? It can. Um, it can increase your um, ex uh, expand on your network. LinkedIn will take a look at that. If you tag someone, um, at least 25% of the people have to engage in the post. If less than that, then your 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 reach becomes smaller. So yes, oh, there's possibility. No so don't tag people unless less you there's a high likelihood of them replying to the post. I'm gonna tag people and then call them and make sure that they uh, <laughs> they look at yeah, the yeah that that Ed that won't be annoying at all. <laughs> or drive over to the home if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it all depends. You know, if you just tag people and they don't really know you, then, you know, like if you tag Gary V, he probably won't reply. You know, personally. Now let it be a warning to you. If I tag you, you better respond to the tag. Otherwise, you can expect a visit from me. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna drive over there. <laughs> Angry man. Okay, so that covers kind of the um, the. Uh, the, the kind of systems portion. And this is talking about maximizing events. So uh, I kind of separate out into five sections here, uh, understanding the, the rules of each event. Each event's different. Like we just upgraded this to a regular Zoom to a webinar because 
we knew that we'll get close to 200 people or two or 300 people, right? And so, um, and the features are different and all that stuff. Um, but each, each platform, depending on how many people and the setup and the software and the companies that kind of sponsor are a little bit different. Um, but we want to use every opportunity to engage as long as it's reasonable. You know, what's reasonable for one person may not be the same for other. But for me, it's about um, would this piss me off? Would I appreciate this? You know, and then always think about what's in it for them. If you're going to connect with someone, um, it's not about you selling your service. It's about how you help them. Um, you know, will they be the hero? You know, is this something to make their life easier? You know, do they ask for it? You know, that sort of thing. Uh, connecting with your new contact. I'm referring to within this environment, you know, we're having, um, uh, we purposely created um, a kind of a micro, um, a micro setup for uh, a different, uh, what do we call this, Ed? For the um, community. We created a micro community to allow people to kind of expand on some of these uh, uh, possibilities when you do a new connection. Uh, the follow-up, you know, uh, additional communication to event, event leaders. Event leaders is your gold mine to network. So these people know a lot of individuals. Um, I've seen people that have 60,000 people in their network. They know people. So get in good with the people who are actually um, sponsoring uh, running these events and, and that sort of thing, because more than likely they will be very open to, to help you uh, as long as it's within cert a certain tolerance, you know, a certain limit uh, of their time. So we'll go through a couple of these right here. Um, let's see here. Okay, so event rules. We kind of went through this at the beginning uh, before we start the recording. Um, there's different cultures and there's different um, there's different temperaments of individuals. I'll give you an example. I uh, reached out to someone and I just let them know, you know, to to have a uh, let them know what I did and I said if it's worthwhile, you know, feel free to check my profile out. Um, I said, by the way, I'm having this event, right? He replied back, I don't know what you're selling, but I don't want it. You know, he, he's actually really rude because I wasn't selling him anything, but he had a very low tolerance for any kind of conversation. So I already know that I will never want to engage with this person again. I don't want to do business. I don't know if he had a bad day, but I kind of, I'm kind of like, okay, I don't want to bother this guy anymore. You know, although that's not my intent, I'm not trying to sell a service. I'm trying to kind of uh, uh, understand who this person is and get to know them. Right. And so I, I uh, made sure I didn't contact him. And I removed him from my uh, network. And I said, I appreciate your reply. I'll remove, remove you from my network. I also blocked him. And it's not being mean to him. I'm not being mean to him. But I don't want to accidentally connect with him again. I don't want to accidentally have an engagement with him. And for me, it's kind of better just to do that so he can kind of be on his merry way. Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of different temperaments. Um, another thing that we've seen on this, I personally seen on this uh, uh, event page that we have, and we'll have a new event, I think next month, talking about uh, email optimization and more details on, on how to pull stuff off LinkedIn properly. Um, but uh, I, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, oh, on our event, I had to remove a number of posts and these posts were inappropriate. And so a lot of times people will post inappropriate stuff. You have to nip it in the bud pr pretty quickly. And one was asking to um, add stuff on a form, you know, for business. And this, that's the wrong way of doing that. That's the, remember how to date scenario. A lot of people don't know how to date. Well, that person didn't know how to date. Another one is like, hey, I need money for this. You know, this weird stuff. And so you got a lot of this noise and you only want to kind of connect and deal with people that, um, that is a, a benefit to you, you know? Of course, you want to be nice and stuff like that. But if there is no reason to connect with someone or someone, if you're controlling an environment for post, uh, you have to do your due diligence to, to remove what's, you know, what's not healthy, you know, for that environment. So anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent. Um, you know, the rules or events or type of events we kind of talked about, um, not to spam, you know, uh, we don't want to do that. Um, you know, does the announcer 
or the presenter announced the rules of engagement prior, like we did, um, you know, uh, make sure your mic's always on mute. I think it's automatically on mute on the webinars. Um, uh, allowed to uh, private, are you allowed to private message each other? And usually a lot of these Zoom meetings, uh, you have the option to private message. So in a typical Zoom, you'll have all these people and you'll see numbers of people on there and other people will talk. In those particular cases, it's usually our right to kind of uh, to engage with them directly. And I've got a number of meetings by doing that. I said, we're doing this, we're doing this, and I'm talking, we're doing this, and we're having a great engaging conversation going back and forth. Um, and then I, I sent them a, a private message on the thing. And I said, hey, I know you're doing this. Would you want to talk about it further? She says, sure. Then I give her my booking link. You know, I don't shove a booking link to her. Um, I asked if she wants it. In this case, I did shove a booking link, but I'm the presenter, so I can pretty much do what I want. But you get what I'm saying. You got to understand, um, is there any dots to connect during these meetings? If it is, allow me to engage as a participant and then let me go and reach out to her and see if we can engage further, you know? Um, you know, and that goes along under what circumstances do I share my contact details? You know, I share um, if I feel that they need my phone number, I'll give it to them, but I'll typically share my LinkedIn and my booking link um, because my LinkedIn, they will have to connect and my booking link has a process for vetting. So if they're not gonna fill out those five questions, um, they're, they're not really that interested. And plus I pre-vet it because I ask if this is something that we wanna talk about during that meeting. Um, Yes, and another thing too is uh, I'm a LinkedIn expert and I know there are other LinkedIn experts on here and uh, what's not kosher and they know this, but I'm just using this as an example. If uh, you are in the same field as a presenter, you don't wanna poach, you know? So you kind of need to know your place. Um, you can definitely engage and then have people reach out to you and stuff like that, but you have to kind of understand who you're dealing with, who's the, who the event is, because what we're doing with this uh, community is people are gonna be very visible, they'll see you. And it's, uh, so people will watch your piece and cues in that micro community versus something like that, they might send uh, direct messages to individuals to try to poach, you know, poach people off other events, uh, which we see all the chats and stuff like that. You know, we had one individual that was uh, reaching out to people. And I had a client say, do you know this person? I said, I don't know this person. And it was, it was through this event, they said, well, th they said they know you. I said, no, but I know this person's boss. And I, I gave them a call and they, they had to stop, you know, kind of bothering people. And so you, when you're in this environment, you gotta know what's kosher and what's not. Now, the type of events, which is kind of the first part, um, there's lots of events. There's event facilitators. That's what I call it. Um, LinkedIn event is not an event. It's more of a facilitator that links out to a potential event. It could be a live, it could be a Zoom, it could be a webinar. Everbright is the same way, you know? So it's a component that allows you to market that event, but not the event itself. Now the event things we have here are Zoom, Microsoft Teams, which I don't like um, because we had some technical problems with that. Google Meets because it's free or something similar. On demand things are like LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. They're a little different in how they work, but it's a general idea. And another thing is multicasting. Um, um, if you have a streaming or a restreaming service, uh, Restream, StreamYard, Streamlabs are the, the biggest ones. Um, I think, Ed, do you have um, that YouTube video from I do. Dr. A? I do. I'll post Why don't you right add now. that to the chat? Um, oh, and a lot of people are, are chatting on there too. You, do you see the chat? I do. I hope you're reading it because I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm making copies of stuff because I know we're, we're running up against the clock here. We're probably going to have to answer a lot of these questions. In yeah. The so I'll go ahead and skip through these things here. But the link that he's providing is Dr. A. And Dr. A makes, she made over $100,000 a month through some of these, um, you know, th through some of these restreaming platforms and stuff like that. 
So um, webinars and Zoominars and online means very important. Now, connecting with your new contacts, you know, I think we went over this, uh, you know, um, if people are speaking, you know, you can visually identify them, you can connect the dots. We talked about that already, proper engagement if we're allowed to private message them. Uh, watch in the chat and participants. The chat is a big portion too. I can't keep my eye on it, but if you're a participant, it's much easier to kind of read and engage. Now, the other one is that the conversation, the chat goes live, you know, uh, ask them for the content, ask them if they want to exchange information. Always ask first, you know, uh, engage, uh, get a good feel and vibe, and then ask if they want to engage further, you know, and then you can exchange information and make sure the information uh, is actually on your calendars because I live off the calendars. The follow-up, we've talked about this prior, so I'll go through this quickly. Uh, you know, schedule properly. Um, if you have exchanged information, um, make sure the information is correct. And then if you create a calendar invite, make sure the information that you wanna to talk to uh, agenda-wise is on there and it's sent via email too. So you're prepping the, prepping the meeting to have them prepared and to be more serious for the meeting. Um, see, you know, make sure they're on calendars, make sure they accept the invite. Um, and I already talked about the details, um, providing a recap video of the doc. We've already talked about this, the recap video. So I wanna go through that, but um, um, you get the idea of that's a very powerful tool. Um, second follow-up uh, meeting. So usually when you have a meeting, you may have that recap and then you have the follow-up and then prep that meeting properly with that recap prior, allows them to really understand what's gonna happen, happen allows you to close deals a lot faster. So it's no ambiguity. Um, attention to community event leaders. We've already talked about this. Um, uh, we, people like Ed and myself are kind of uh, those uh, gold mines to network opportunities. So those people that are running these events, you wanna know because they have large networks and they can really help you, but you always have to um, figure out when you're reaching out to someone, what's in it for them? You know, how can I really help this person and engage with this person? Why would this person want to engage with me? And uh, this is a famous quote by Nike. It's just do it. <laughs> so it sounds very simple, but you have to get a strategy and you have to execute, even if it's not perfect and you can tighten it up, tighten it up. So you should spend, you know, between one and two hours on LinkedIn a day versus eight hours. One hour, if you're, uh, CEO mindset, maybe a little longer if you're a uh, strictly entrepreneur mindset. So hopefully you have liked this presentation. Um, can I get a list of the remaining 141 eight people to see if you found any of these uh, slides interesting or any of the information that we provide interesting? Put a one in the chat. All right. Hey, and, you're ahead. All right. So I was talking very fast at the end because I put too many slides. So note to Ed, our next one, we have to have less slides so we can dive a little deeper into that information. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let everyone go unless we have any additional questions. I can stay on for 10 minutes um, and I'll go ahead and look uh, under the questions or even the chat. Um, don't you have a oh, don't yeah, you have some one questions. more slide uh, there, Troy, to promote the next event? Do I? I don't leave think. me hanging. I'm the I'm the co-speaker <laughs> on that one. I'm so sorry. I need, I need to get have, people to we, show up. We do have a next event, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the community. So we'll try to have a monthly event. Um, I don't have a slide for it because I'm on the PDF, but maybe I can grab that real quick. Yeah, uh, we and we can't actually post the event until this one's over. I think. Yeah, we had some problems we'll getting it posted. Issues this time. We did. Like around. all of a sudden, just before the gremlins popped up, just before the event. Well, it's fine. Um, let me see if I can grab that. So I'll do go ahead and stop this right here. I'm gonna look at some questions. So Ed, my apologies. Um, yeah, you would be running uh, most of the event next time, and what we're gonna talk about a little deeper is how to pull information off LinkedIn uh, into video mail. Video mail has a 40% open rate on the first message, very, very high open rate. So 
Um, so you're not spamming people on DM. You're actually creating content that's kind of worth watching. And a lot of this video mail is trackable. So they have real-time interactive stuff where they see the video for 15 seconds. There's a button to, to push for a phone call. There's a chat. You know how many times they've seen it. It gives you an indication of how to connect the dots. And he'll talk more about that next month. Uh, the other thing that he's going to talk about is conversion. Um, how many of your emails, um, uh, I'm going to conversion. How many of your emails actually make it to the inbox? 35% of emails um, go straight to spam on average. And then you have another percentage that goes to promotion tabs. How to get that 35% down to about 1%. That's kind of a trick. And those are the two things that he will be talking about. Um, on the Q&A, yeah, oh, I had to problem. scroll down. And so the chat, I think I removed, I don't know if I can see the chat. There was a question on automation. Um, you have to use certain tools. I prefer not to use automation unless it's a one message. So if you're doing something like open mail and your target's very specific, that's okay. A good thing about some of these tools, you can then pull the information off once you send that message. But when, when running a sequence, other than maybe the first message, it should really be hand done. Um, all right, so I see a couple more questions. Um, sorry, I think I'm late for this question. How can be sure that uh, when I try to connect with someone, they will accept it? Yeah, so we talked about it. You're not gonna be sure they're gonna connect your stuff. But if you meet the person in person and you said, I'm sending you a calendar invite, you know, they'll most likely accept. If you engage with their post prior and they, re and they reciprocate the information, there's a higher percent of chance that they uh, will accept. Um, I don't know what the typical acceptance rate, but a minimum kind of bad acceptance rates is about 15 to 20%. And a good acceptance rate is um, probably about 30 and higher percentage, you know? Um, but if you are interacting with someone prior on their post and they're, they're, they're responding, if you send them account, if you send them an invite to connect and you say, yeah, I enjoyed the conversations we had on the, on the post, um, they'll most likely accept it. You know, you boost that up to 60 to 80%. Um, so that's uh, Norby, N-O-R-B-I-E. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh, let's see, Claudia, uh, how to promote a nonprofit for cancer kids. My son passed away from childhood cancer. So first of all, um, um, my condolences. Um, I had a lot of death in my family too, not from cancer. Um, my mother passed away uh, about five years ago or seems maybe six years ago. And then my brother passed away um, fairly recently. And um, uh, so family is really important. Um, how to promote for a nonprofit for cancer. Well, I think that's something maybe you want to take offline. I don't have an answer for, for that in, in particular, but if you post three times a week for content that's helpful and you're targeting the right people, uh, that helps a lot. And I, um, I think what you need to do is truly network. Figure out your network key. Who are the people that you need to talk to and why? So it's a who, it's a who and why. And if you can answer those questions, the systems can be built you know, around that. Um, how can you ethically endorse connections if you can't actually speak to their skills? Uh, you should not. <laughs> it's simple. Um, uh, if you're endorsing people, you're endorsing people that, um, that you know or you've seen their work. Um, although I'm engaged with um, new connections, they aren't actually able to speak to my curriculum training. Or is it okay to base off? Of, well, if you endorse someone, and it's a check mark endorsement. It's not really a big deal, you know. They're endorsing skills. Uh, people can endorse your skills based on your material, um, but when they give you a recommendation, which is the text portion, they're actually writing a recommendation that has, you know, that has a lot more weight. And so those are the things that you have to be um, um, very deliberate uh, as far as your relationship with the individual. Uh, Nicole. Um, well, we'll be able to receive a copy of the presentation in an email. No, uh, you'll receive a copy of the invitation in the um, in the community. That we'll send you a link to the community, and we'll put all that stuff there. And eventually, I'll post it on LinkedIn. 
Um, let's see, are there samples of first time connection requests that can be shared? Um, I don't think, um, if you're sending a connection request, usually is individualized based on the person or your engagement with the person. Um, I do have one that works out pretty well, um, but it's based on my personality if it's just someone I don't know. And I, I'm doing a lot less of those, but it went the longs of line, it went along the lines of, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I do A, B, and C, I'm a bit nerdy, you know, um, and if you don't want to connect with me, it's okay because I don't have feelings anyway. And so, so mine is kind of dry humor, you know, I just put it out there and that gets a pretty high open rate. It's like 40% open, 40% uh, acceptance rate, but it also has to do with your profile. Um, you know, certain people will only connect with other certain people. So your profile has to be on point. We actually redo profiles as well. Your banner has to be on point. You have to understand what information and how to repeat, how to repeat your theme in order to kind of drive the message through. Once they look at that uh, pres uh, at your at your profile, that's a key indicator. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. Um, I don't know where the chat went on mine. Ed, I'm are you there? Here. I am. Um, I cannot see my chat. I think that was a technical issue. Did you uh, anything on the actual chat? I was reading off the Q and A. Yeah, there's a. Uh, it's been going pretty quickly. One of the big things. Uh, will this video be available on demand? Yes, it, it it will be. This all the videos, all the events that we'll be be doing will be placed in the community after they're done. And then there's also going to be, I believe, a PDF of the slides. There'll also be notes. And if you have other questions, just join the community. What what Chicky has done with the community is pretty incredible. The stuff that, that that's available in there. It, it's not again. It's not just to promote uh, Troy and the panelists. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to meet like-minded people. And one of the things about joining a community, my reach is what it is, is because I'm. I'm connected to a couple of communities. You start meeting people in a community that want to grow their business, want to get a better reach with LinkedIn. That's a great place to find those people, connect with them because they'll like and comment on your, your, um, your posts. In fact, the post I have running right now that I'm going to be posting uh, in the event is a, a shared post. Uh, I would call it going viral. I've got 27,000. I posted it this morning before the event. 20,000 people it's reached. Uh, over five, it's a poll. Over 500 people have um, have uh, voted on it. Uh, and that's in, in, in large part because of the community I'm involved with. Awesome. Uh, I think people are asking for all those links again, uh, the booking links and the LinkedIn links of the... Of the oh, we can do that. Um, yeah, the sponsors. Yeah. I'll also throw in, is it pronounced Bolin or Bolin? Search. Oh, Boolean. Boolean, Boolean. <laughs> yeah, like, just Ed, what are you bullion. talking about? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna, yeah, I, I have a document. A... Actually, in the documents um, on the link that you provided for the um, article, um, there is a document called um, How to Use a Boolean Search. Yeah, that's a that's a search that you put in the Boolean, but uh, the document that I have and it's free um, on that link for um, for one of the articles for the documents. I have a full, I think, a five or eight page document on how to create a Boolean search for Sales Navigator. Well, I, I tell you, this is the one I custom created to just find CEOs, a specific person, not their assistant, not other people. Uh, if you go in there and you edit that just slightly, you don't have to do it very much. Uh, it is is highly specific to the people that you want to reach. Highly, highly specific. Mm -hmm. Don't mean to step on you. No, oh, it's fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, as far as the bullying searches, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, and one thing is to understand um, how to use a bullying search so you can modify things the way you want to. See, uh, how to maximize reach. Oh, there was another question there. Uh, let's see if I can. Find how to maximize it. reach with posts that are not popular, like racism. Um, 
Oh, like problems with race. Um, well, um, I would say that consistency is key. If you're posting anything, it doesn't matter if it's race, like uh, fight against racism or whatever, but they have to um, drive a point and they have to be interesting enough to, for the viewers to engage. And a lot of times your first line is important. You know, you want to, you want to tag that line because that's the first thing they see. And it, we want to drive that point across to kind of entice that uh, individual uh, with that post. If you post three or four times a week, it gets better. There are other things that kind of boost your post too. Like um, they have what they call posting parties and stuff like that. We're not going to get into that right now, but it's they're okay to artificially boost your, get past your 1515 algorithm um, um, uh, for a short term, but they're not a great long-term solution. So I don't ever use any of those things. I just put out content naturally, um, you know, and I try to engage normally. Uh, another thing too is you can, um, you know, when you're tagging someone, you can kind of reach out to them prior on a message and send them a post. Um, that way they're tagged because they may not see the notification, but you can DM them directly, you know. Usually you want to let them know beforehand, you know, to increase that. Because when someone um, interacts with your post, uh, what happens is it, it dis displays that to their network or a smaller portion of their network. And if you get enough people doing that, that's how it gets a little viral, you know, um, you know, if that makes sense. How does adding your contacts to a, a group work? Um, well, if you're referring to a group on Sales Navigator, a list, I'm talking about a list. So if you are viewing someone on LinkedIn, and you already have Sales Navigator, there's an option there to add or view on Sales Navigator. Once you do that, you can add them to your, your individual list. Hopefully that answers your question, Hamid. Um, is there a, um, where a lot of close contacts there? Um, I sent invite 600 people, only four joined. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You know, once you send uh, an invite to a lot of people, um, usually about 10% of people see it because um, so we have to send out a lot more to, to, to get to those numbers. I mean, we had 1500 people show up. So uh, a lot of us were sending 500 a week and stuff like that. So the, the percentage is about right. Maybe about 10, 5% of the people actually joined. Um, let's see, there's a lot of close contacts there. I don't understand. Uh, not just on a LinkedIn group. Um, yeah, they may have not seen, um, uh, Hamid, they may have not seen the invite, you know, um, yes, uh, you'll receive the, um, oh, that's cheeky letting people know they'll receive the link at the community. All right. Um, happy to connect. And uh, I think we're about wrapped up. We're kind of like way over. So I'll stay online for another two, two minutes and I'll go ahead and drop off. And then Ed, I'll give you a separate call so we can go ahead and get these things out. And then we'll go from there. And hopefully uh, I'll see you guys next week. And um, thanks a lot. All right, Ed, any last words? No, that's it. Uh, thanks so much for everyone to show up. We hope to see you at the next event. It'll be August the 25th, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll teach you a lot about how to leverage email and LinkedIn. You guys are really going to love it. Thanks, everyone.